Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome back to a new video. On my table you can see four GTX 580 GPUs. I'm often on eBay browsing and looking for retro hardware, especially I'm still looking for an Asus Mars 2, which is essentially a GTX 580 but with a special PCB. And then I spotted that GTX 580 is pretty cheap here in Germany and I bought four of them for a price of about 31 to 32 euro each which is about 120 dollar in total and then i asked myself how do those four keep up with a recent gpu like a gtx 1050 ti or a gtx 1650 which are a little bit more expensive than the four gtx 580 on the table but a gtx 1050 Ti has about the same transistor count. It comes with 3.3 billion transistors and I think a GTX 580 had 3 billion transistors on the GPU. 1650 is faster than that but it's also a little bit more expensive. Also in terms of power consumption this should be interesting. Uh, GTX 1050 Ti 75 watt TDP while this has about 250 watt TDP. We will do some comparisons with games, synthetic benchmarks and see if Quad SLI even still works today. We're starting off with some benchmarks I already performed with the GTX 1050 Ti, GTX 1650 and a single 580 to see if everything is working out, driver wise and where we are at when it comes to the base performance. 3D mic fire strike performance with 580 starting at 4476 points, 1050 Ti 6934 points and the 1650 comes at 9310 points. When we are looking at power consumption during a 3D Mark Fire Strike, we have a peak power consumption of the whole system with a 580 at 368 watt, 1050 Ti 253 watt, 1650 at 281 watt. So you can see 1050 Ti and 1650 roughly the same power consumption, not much difference, like 20 watt difference, but the 580 is significantly higher with about 100 watt more under load. We're going to test three different games, Fortnite, CSGO and PUBG. I picked those three games because they're quite popular and they are not as demanding as some other recent titles on the market. And with a single 580, most of them are still playable if you lower your resolution or lower the details. Starting off with Fortnite at 1080p and high preset, the 580 scores 42 FPS average, 32 FPS in the 1% low. The GTX 1050 Ti, 65 FPS average, 53 FPS, 1% low. GTX 1650, 98 and 80 FPS for the 1% low. Therefore, Fortnite, if you keep it at high, I think the 580 doesn't have enough performance. 1050 Ti and 1650 are certainly usable if you want to play at 1080p high. Looking at CSGO with 1080p high, basically the same preset 580 scores 141 FPS and 92 FPS in the 1% low. 1050 Ti 183 and 123 FPS, 1650 with 198 and 137 FPS. Therefore we all know that CSGO is not as demanding. However, a lot of people want to see very very high FPS for CSGO, I would say. It's absolutely playable with the GTX 580, especially not many people are really using a high preset. They have their custom preset, which is not as demanding. Therefore, a 580 should still be absolutely usable for CSGO if you're fine with about 100 FPS in the 1% low. Looking at PUBG, it's pretty much similar to Fortnite. Again, 1080p, however, using the mid preset, not the high because the high is too much for the GTX 580. We have 46 FPS average, 36 FPS in the 1% low, 1050 Ti 67 and 47 FPS and 1650 comes with 78 and 64 FPS. For PUBG, 1050 Ti and 1650 are both absolutely usable, they're not great. You will not have the best experience, the best performance already considering that it's 1080p mid and not high, but it's usable. I think you should probably aim for the higher preset to get more FPS, like at least 100 FPS if you're playing an FPS game like this. At least that's what I prefer when I play PUBG, but I would say the 580 is absolutely not usable. In my opinion, it's only usable in CSGO, but not in the other two titles. So let's see if Quad SLI can change that. Before we even start putting the cards in, we will see that this could be a problem. We have 
two times DVI and we have mini HDMI, but we don't have normal HDMI or display port, which is what you would usually use on a nowadays monitor. And also my test monitors only have HDMI and display port, but I also found an older 1080p monitor that at least has DVI, so we can use that for testing. As I already mentioned before, we are using this AMD Threadripper platform using the Aros Extreme motherboard, which has four slots mechanically at least PCI Express times 16. The requirement for Quad SLI is that you have to use at least times 8 PCI Express on all of the four cards. And that's already a problem because all of the modern platform like C370, C390, AM4, most of them don't support that you have four slots that can supply times 8 to your GPU and therefore this could already be a problem. Who is going to buy an AMD Threadripper platform and then only invest 120 euro into GPUs? Nobody is going to do that. We're going to try it anyway. By the way, that's also why we have to use this additional six pin PCI Express connector. Usually you don't need this one, but if you occupy all four PCI Express slots, then the power supply from the 24 pin connector is not enough anymore. And then you have to occupy this one in addition. In this case, we also have to use a very strong PSU because for the base testing with the 580, it already consumed over 350 watt peak. Considering that it was only one GPU and not four, I think we will see some numbers above 1000 watt load and therefore we have to use a strong PSU. We also need this SLI bridge. Quad SLI bridges are not that easy to find anymore, at least here in Germany. And it also depends what kind of quad SLI bridge you're using, because there's actually a performance difference between those SLI bridges. And back then, when I was still active in the extreme overclocking scene, I did a lot of testing when it comes to quad SLI. And this particular EVGA bridge was giving us the best performance in the benchmarks. Sheik, what's your thought on this SLI bridge? Will it work? Is it good? Looks like everything is still the same as I remember it from 5-6 years ago. You plug in four cards and not all of them are detected. I think I have to swap them or like reinstall the driver and see if this will work. By the way, I have to use the driver version 391. I cannot use the latest 445 version and that could already give the 1050 Ti and the 1650 a performance benefit because they can use the recent driver but for the GTX 580 we cannot use the latest driver anymore. By the way, this is during driver install. This is not even 3D load and it's already over 500 watt just during the driver installation. And here we go, four cards detected, just did a clean driver installation and that was it. Already also detecting that quad SLI is enabled, which is really cool. Back in the days, it was often an issue that even if you had four cards plugged or like two or three, you could often still not enable SLI. And if we cycle through the cards, by the way, we can detect how they are connected. Most of them are connected either by times eight or times 16. As you can see, we're just starting with a 3 mic Fire Strike. Runs smoothly. Yep, that is a solid power consumption. Pretty much what I expected. I was counting for 1000 watt under load. Yeah, 950. Getting there. And here we have a typical quad SLI issue. The performance is not at a level where it should be and I have no idea why. It's more at a level of normal dual or triple SLI, but it's not at quad SLI level from what I can see or judge. We have 7,700 points and I think it should be above 10,000 points. 
no idea why we have such a bad performance. I reran it twice already. You can see all the four GPUs are detected. Quad SLI is definitely enabled. Still, performance is not great. PUBG is working with Quad SLI, but the performance for whatever reason is worse than with a single card. I'm still on the way to my test location, which I'm always using for my frames, but just looking at the frame times, they look absolutely horrible and it feels really not smooth. It feels really bad. Oops. You can see that Fortnite also runs on Quad SLI, but it runs worse than before performance-wise and the frame times are also really bad. You can see those spikes in between again, like this massive spike. This was not there before. Seems to be quite a bit better in CSGO, 243 average right now and just above 102 FPS in the 1% low. Not bad, not bad. Let's take one more look at the benchmark. Fire Strike, we finished with 7764 points in the 580 Quad SLI configuration, putting it between 1050 Ti and 1650 for whatever reason. As I said before, it should score higher, especially because it's a synthetic benchmark. Not sure what exactly is going wrong. In Fortnite, we lowered the performance compared to a single 580 to 40 FPS average and 13 FPS in the 1% low. That was absolutely terrible. Pretty much the same result in PUBG, also lower with 44 FPS in average and 15 FPS in the 1% low. Only CSGO seemed to scale with the SLI configuration and managed to boost the performance to 248 FPS in average and 110 FPS in the 1% low. Therefore, all I can say is that Quad SLI was a bad idea five years ago and it's still a bad idea because most of the games cannot work with it and they cannot handle it. The drivers are not optimized for this at all. They never will be because Nvidia decided to skip Quad SLI, which was a good idea in my opinion. Obviously, they could decide to sell four cards to an individual customer, but the hassle which is involved in keeping the drivers up to date for Quad SLI, which is only used by a very, very low amount of people, I think it's better to only stick with Dual SLI, which works kind of okay with RTX 2080 Ti cards nowadays. Therefore, this can only be used as a room heater and it's absolutely heating my room in here. After like half an hour or one hour and this thing pulling almost 1000 watt out of the socket, it's getting warm in here. And it's not even summer. That's why, yeah. GTX 580 Quad SLI, not a great idea. Unfortunately, it didn't scale as well as I thought. I would expect, I would have expected it to scale better in the synthetic test. Not sure what exactly is going wrong. Sometimes Quad SLI just doesn't like to work and that's the way it is. Thanks for joining in and see you next time.